Hello, hello everybody. Welcome back. Well, I am here today to do a video tutorial to show you how I have made these. I've had quite a few requests of people wanting to know how to make these. So I'm going to show you today. You have to start with a beaded bead, which I will link that tutorial below so that you can watch that one first because you've got to have a beaded bead first to make this tassel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one right here and I'm going to show you how to make the rest of the tassel part. Now I've already done some of it ahead of time to try to keep this video a little bit shorter. So if you've not made your beaded bead yet, go back and click the link below and watch that tutorial and make that first part. Now the rest of it, I just put together six pieces that are going to hang. I do three long ones and three shorter ones and dangles. Now the reason I only have two is because I saved one to do with you of each one of these and show you what I've already done. So I am just loading on, let me get these up in here, the same thing here. I had a turquoise, um, a orangey red, a yellow, and then a whole bunch of turquoise, um, and I just, you can count them if you want to, especially if you're using uh, check glass beads because they will all be consistent in size. These are not real consistent. So I'm just going to beat them on there until it gets up to the point where I want it to be. Ooh, maybe one more. Let's see. About like that. Because since this is the little tassel part, these do not have to be the same length. As a matter of fact, it would actually look better if they're not all the exact same length. So that's all I did. I just beaded that up. And then I'm just curling my wire back. And making a little loop up there at the top. Okay, so there is... Let me get the correct pliers. Let me pick that up just a little bit. So there's three of those, okay? So we're going to make one more of those. So I've got a turquoise, I'm looking at this, a yellow, an orangey red, another turquoise, another yellow. Oh, and that yellow needs to have its the hole reamed out. Okay, let's try this one. Okay, yellow and another orangey red. And you don't have to do this, you know. Your, your pattern could be different all the way up if you wanted it to. Now that is a different bead. Okay, here's what I want. I want that, re that bead right there. So every one of these could be different if you wanted them to be. They don't have to be the same. This is just an idea to get you started. You wanted to see how I did mine, so that's how I did mine. I just put lotion on my hands, and now <laughs> my hands are slip sliding away. All right, let's see if we can close that little loop. That one almost cut it too short, but okay. So there's that third one. Then I made the little dangles to go at the bottom. Now, I'm making mine in two sections. You could actually make them in three sections if you wanted your dangles longer. That's totally up to you. Um... So I've got jump rings. Now you could connect these directly. I don't like to do that because um, the jump ring gives it a little more movement. And since this is a dangly, you know, I want it to have a little more fluid movement to it. So let's see, where is my other plier? And if, if you don't know how to open a jump ring, oh, I'm sure you all do by now. Okay, so there's one of my dangles, all right? So we're just going to put jump rings on the rest of these little guys. And then we're going to attach the hole. And I'm putting them on the colored part, um, the part of the dangle that has the color. I'm putting that down, such as that right there. I'm putting that down. You could put it up. Doesn't matter. Whatever you like. Okay, so let's do the third little guy, and let's put this in here. We're going to add our dangle here, and let's close that jump ring. 
Okay, so there's three dangles. That's our three long ones, okay? Let's do our three shorter ones. Now, you could do six, seven, eight. I mean, it really don't matter ever how many dangles. I got to quit saying ever how many. But however many dangles you want, that's how many you do. Ever how many don't sound right, does it? <laughs> and for the dangle part at the bottom... Um, we're using a um, a head pin. Where did it go? Okay, let's try this. Um, this dangle right here, I made two, but I was going to make the third one with you. And I thought I had all the stuff out, but apparently I didn't. So, to make that little dangle, all I did was I loaded on um, one turquoise seed bead and then I loaded on a daisy spacer and then a crystal, a little gold crystal, another daisy spacer, and another turquoise bead. So that, that's how I did those. But again, you can do anything in the world you want to do. All right, so we're going to cut this one off right here. Okay, and then we're going to curl this little guy back toward us and make that little loop and close it up. Okay, good deal. Now, let's take a jump ring and let's open it up. Let's see which end I'm using this end. Add the little dangle. Close it back. Okay, good. Okay, last one. One more jump ring. Open it up. I hope y'all can see. I hope that's not too dark. Put that on there. And here's our last little dangle. All right, now, I'm going to take a little bit larger jump ring, this one right here, and I'm going to load every one of those dangles onto this jump ring. Okay, but before I do that, I'm going to add one extra thing, this little key. It's a little lightweight, thin little key. I thought that would be pretty um, in there with this particular dangle. So I'm just going to open up a jump ring and put that little key on and put an eye pin on. And then I'm going to close it back up like this. Now we've got a key dangling from an eye pin. So I can maybe, oh, I don't know. Let's see. Let's add some turquoise and that color and maybe another turquoise. I'm just, so this one will actually have seven dangles total counting the key. And according to, if you want your key to be longer, if you want it to be shorter, that will um, depend on how many of these you load on. I'm just going to load on a few, knock off a few, <laughs> load them back on again. All right, we'll stop there. That'll be good. All right, and I'm going to trim that down just a hair. All right, and then we are going to curl this back, curl it back, curl it back, and straighten it up. Now, we're going to take that large jump ring. You can do this in any order you want to. But I loaded on one long one, one short one, one long one, the key, and a shorter one, and a longer one, and a shorter one. And you could just keep going as far as you want to go with that. Just have fun with it. Now, they're all connected on this jump ring, on one jump ring. Now, we need a um, large, uh, let me go grab it. Okay, we needed a large um, eye pin, and these were short eye pins. So, I'm going to go back. I should have done this before I closed. I'm going to go ahead and open that jump ring back up, and I'm going to put this eye pin on it, and I'm going to close it and make sure it's good and secure. Now you've got everything dangling from your eye pin, all right? So we want to load it up, 
but you can see this hole is very big and that hole is very big. And so I don't want it to just be, you know, dangling around in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to stop that hole up. So you need to find a bead that would be big enough to go in that hole. And that one's not quite big enough. So I don't, what you want is you want a bead that's just big enough to sit in that hole, but not go in it. So I think the crystal's probably going to do it. Let's try the crystal because that's a little bit bigger than what I was using. All right. So if that crystal sits in that hole, yes, I think that will work. All right. So I'm going to put a crystal on both sides and that just kind of keeps that from dangling around in there. Kind of reminds me of a jellyfish. <laughs> I live on the Gulf Coast, so. Um, all right, and then we're gonna add a bead cap, the bead of your choice. You know what, I chose that one, but that's the wrong one. Let me go get the right one. Okay, I had to find another bead. I don't have any more just like that, so that's fine. And I had to trade out my bead cap because the bead I did decide to use is to small for the other bead caps. So I got this frosted turquoise and I just love those frosted beads. I don't know why, but see, I'm just loading my beads up on that um, pin and then just decide what you want to do. I could put another one of those right there. I think I'm going to go with, what do I want to do? Let's do but let's go back to the red for just a second and add just a couple of more. Let's see if we can get all this. Now, kind of hold that underneath the bottom so that it don't get away from you, okay? So we've got I'm putting on a red one and I'm putting on a crystal cuz that's the same color we've been using and maybe one more red one and let's see how that looks. Okay. Now, I the way I do it, I grab it with my pliers and turn it upside down and make sure that bead is in the right, in the middle. Make sure that crystal is down in the middle. Everything's where it's supposed to be. And then I'm just going to fold that over. And now I'm leaving this one long because I want this loop to be a good bit larger because it's got to attach to our bulb pin or whatever. And I just, I want it to have a little more strength to it. Okay, so there's our loop. And then all I did from there is attach a bulb pin at the top. Um, you can choose any color. I don't see a good, a good color that I love for that. But I just take a bulb pin and load up some um, beads on it, however you want it to be. It can be all turquoise or you can mix and match and add some of the yellow and the red if you want to, but I usually do about three and then maybe a daisy spacer and then this, and that daisy acts as a stopper to keep these guys from sliding all through to one side or something, you know, and that is it. Ta-da, that's it, finished. I do like it with a key in there too, what do you think? So anyway, guys, give it a try. Um, you're going to find these in my Etsy shop. I'm going to leave the link below if you just want to purchase one, but I would love for you to try it and show me what you make. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.